Hi everyone, Materium here again with another Warhammer Battle Report for WTF Warhammer Night. Uh, tonight we will be playing Warhammer Unbound at 2500 points with a Blood and Glory scenario. Okay, so I'll take a moment to explain exactly what we did. It's not traditionally Unbound. Uh, we still are playing 2500 points and you do have to uh, have the right percentages of everything in it. But we are allowing... Uh, units from any army that you own so it's kind of a mix mishmash of uh, what we're, we're doing here so uh, I am playing this game against uh, my friend Michael uh, he is using units from the dwarves and the beastmen I'm using them from demons vampires ogres and empire um, I left out my dwarves since I knew he would be playing with his. Uh, we are playing Blood and Glory, uh, so that figured that would be the best way to do it, since you could load up on monsters and stuff and, and crazy crap. Um, so uh, I think he's starting with 7 or 8 Fortitude. I'm starting with 11, and the breaking point for this game is 3. Uh, items of note for import, the water there ends up being the necrotic ooze, the tower in the center is a tower of blood, and the swamp to the other side of the tower is a mist-wreathed swamp. Um, other than that, everything else is normal, and we never do find out what the forest in the top corner is. So, starting on Michael's side, uh, we have a unit of three minotaurs with full command and additional hand weapon. Next to that is a Dwarf Cannon with the Rune of Forging, then a unit of 30 Dwarf Warriors with full commands and shield. Then we have a horde of 30 Hammerers with a full command and the Master Rune of Groth one eye. Uh, in there is his Thane BSB with the Great Weapon and the Master Rune of Grunky, and his Dwarf Lord on Shield Bearers uh, with the Armor of Boric Beetlebrow, two Runes of Might, and a Shield. Uh, next is a gyrocopter. After that is a 40-man gore herd unit with additional hand weapons and full command. In them is his Great Bray Shaman, level 4 lore of beasts, uh, talisman of preservation, dispel scroll, and additional hand weapon. And then there is a gyro bomber on the other side of that. Uh, in this army, his dwarf lord will be serving as uh, his general. So, starting on my left, uh, I have two units of ten Noblar Trappers. Uh, they have Musician and Standard. Behind that is a unit of six Maneaters. The first three have Abrasive Pistols. The back three have a pistol each. They have the Dragon Hide Banner and Full Command. Next to that is a unit of twenty Plague Bearers with Full Command, the Banner of Swiftness, and with them is... Uh, my warrior priest with no magic weapons, just extra hand weapon, heavy armor, and shield. Uh, and behind that is my general, my bloodthirster with an exalted gift. Uh, he ended up getting doubly blessed, so I took the eternal blade and skill swallower uh, was the other one I rolled. Uh, next to that is my celestial huracanum. Okay, then next to that, there are three more units of ten Noblar Trappers with Standard and Musician. Uh, next to the Huracanum is my level two Necromancer to the Lore of Death on the Corpse Cart with the Balefire upgrade. And he has my Dispel Scroll. Behind the Noblar units is my Vampire BSB on a mounted barded horse. Uh, he has the Armor of Destiny, Red Fury, and he and a shield, and he is also a level 2 Lore of Death. And then on the far end, I have a unit of three Demigriff Knights with Musician and Standard. Now, my thoughts for this is I went with a very gimmicky army. Um, a lot of my stuff is potential cannon bait, um, and that's really the only reason I'm taking Lore of Death is to make them lethal enough to counteract the fact that they may be easily killed. Um, I went with the Noblar Trapper units because it's just a cheap way to get a crap ton of fortitude. So he's just got a lot of stuff to kill and doesn't have all that many units to do it with. Although, he went with the strategy that he's just going to make one big tough-as-nails unit, i.e. the Hammers. Um, 
that has enough fortitude where I have to kill that unit to win the game. Um, at least by fortitude. If, if we come down to it being undecided, then we get to go by points and, and we'll see what goes from there. So, um, we, we both came into this with the right expectations, I think. We're just handling that part of the strategy in two entirely different ways. So, uh, it'll be very interesting to see which way the game ends up going. And Michael's side ends up going first. Uh, he moves the Minotaurs in the building. Um, I'm not sure if he intends to keep them there or just use it as a stepping stone, but there it is. Uh, his dwarf warriors on this side go into the water. This is when we find out that it's poisonous, and I think he may lose one guy to dangerous terrain uh, for his movement into the water. And here in the center, you see he moves up the dwarf uh, hammers a little bit and brings his gyrocopter behind them. Because uh, he realizes with him getting first turn that he doesn't have enough movement. Or, I'm sorry, this is the bomber. He moves the bomber behind them because he realizes he doesn't have enough movement to get behind my lines yet. So he wants to keep him safe until he has the opportunity to do that. And on this flank, you see he is just moving that big unit of gore up closer. Um, those of you who are particularly eagle-eyed will notice that the champion of this unit is being served by a lizard man Saurus warrior. Um... The reason for that is that uh, Michael is is considering. Well, I don't know if he's fully decided to to do lizard men yet as his next army, um, but he picked up a box of them, uh, I guess, to give him a break from painting, and working on the beastmen. So uh, he's got a box of Saurus warriors, and he got his first test model painted, so he wanted to use it. So um, there for your looking ple pleasure. Um, also, since it's really the first good picture I've taken, take a look at the uh, tower on the side. My wife painted that, and it looks really good. <laughs> so during magic, he Flock of Dooms, uh, this unit of Noblars kills three of them, but since the BSB was right there next to them, they uh, pass their panic check and don't go fleeing quite yet. And then he bounces a cannonball over my man-eaters right into the face of my bloodthirster general... I fail my ward save, and he hits me for four out of my five wounds, top of one. So we go into my turn one, and uh, I just need to get the hell out of the line of sight of that cannon. Um, so I fly the Bloodthirster over here around to the side of the building. Figure next turn I'll fly over the building and, and slam into the cannon and get rid of that. But uh, he's pretty much made the Bloodthirster a non-issue in this game uh, with only one wound there's not a whole lot I'm going to be able to throw him into uh, that's going to be able to help. So that's uh, definitely definitely a, a, a strong leaning towards my opponent in this game because uh, he's one point away from collect or one wound away from collecting two fortitude. So that's uh, not good. And on my left flank here, pretty much everything else moves up. Uh, I'm moving the Noblar units essentially to act as shields uh, and speed bumps. I, I realize if he comes at me, they're going to die, but I'm hoping the Trapper will uh, end up doing a couple of wounds and uh, will thin them down for the inevitable counterattack. Um, now here, I'm, I have Sniper and Scout on my... or Sniper and Stubborn on my Maneaters. Um, I really probably should have been focusing fire on... The characters, but again, I was afraid of the cannon, so I tried shooting the cannon first, and that was a stupid decision. Um, but that's just kind of, if you guys don't see, I don't know if I took a picture of my utter fail there, but uh, that just is kind of what I'm thinking at this point. Um, I also wanted to make sure that my Balefire was in range to uh, mess up with his casters, and, and it is, so I'm in good shape there. And then here on this side, again, I'm moving everything up. Um, I'm kind of staggering the Noblar units so that hopefully when he's ready to charge, he'll charge through a couple of them before he hits my BSB. I'm also moving the Demigriffs around to try and get them around that swamp so I can hit this gory unit in the side or the rear. Um, and I wanted to leave a little bit of a window in between the Noblar units so I can shoot a Purple Sun down because uh, my BSB did get Purple Sun. Um... So we'll kind of see what happens there. So he stops my magic, and my shooting didn't work for crap. So uh, we go to uh, 
my opponent's turn two, and he decides to start playing in a little cagey. He doesn't want to charge the Knoblars, so he just kind of reforms here so that he's still got everything in his front. And then he zooms over here and uh, goes to drop a bomb on that uh, Knoblar unit he's right behind and ends up here so that he's threatening my Necromancer on the corpse card as well. However, the bomb he drops on the gyro or the Knoblars is a dud and only kills one of the Knoblars in that unit, so they're not going to panic or anything. And here he flies the other gyrocopter over this unit of Knoblars and drops his bomb on it, uh, his once per game bomb, and only inflicts one wound. So, again, uh, not a great showing from the dwarf bombing crews. Somebody might need to check their gunpowder allotment. It might have gotten wet. And then over here, the Minotaurs uh, come out of the building with an eye towards my man-eaters, which I'm okay um, with that. The Knoblars are going to get a chance to thin them down with dangerous terrain and maybe a little of crappy shooting. Um, and I'm pretty sure that my man-eaters can handle three Minotaurs, so I'm not too concerned there. So I stop his magic, and his shooting fails, so we go into turn, my turn two, and uh, Bloodthirster into the cannon. Uh, yeah, th those cannon dudes are dead. That Bloodthirster with the Eternal Blade is going to eat him alive. Uh, my only complaint is that there's no characters in there, so I don't get any Skill Swallower uh, wounds back. <laughs> then on this flank, I bring the... Uh, Demigriffs around so that unless he moves forward pretty aggressively they're still going to be in my front arc so I'm pretty happy with that and here in the center I keep my Knoblars staggered because I still want to do what I need to with, with them against that gore herd but I pull back my BSB um, I do this for two reasons first of all I don't want to give him a shot where he gets a gyrocopter shot on the BSB and the unit um, so it'll hopefully not make him target that. Secondly, I have Fate of Juna, and I want to use that on one of the gyrocopters, so I need to get them in, in front line, and so that's what I'm doing there. Um, over here on this side, I, I'm still keeping everything pretty tight, bunched up, haven't opened the box yet. Um, but I turn the Knoblars towards the Minotaur, um, and that gets them within the 6-inch range that they can huck stuff at. Same thing over here with the hammers, the knoblars are moving up to shoot, and everything else I'm kind of keeping boxed up and ready for him to come to me. So in my magic phase, I end up using Fate of Bajuna and only doing two wounds to the gyrocopter. So we go into shooting, and uh, my man-eaters, between the man-eaters and the knoblars, I kill one of the three Minotaur, which makes me very happy because now it's it's a certainty that the man eaters are gonna just eat them alive. Oh yeah, and here is that picture of uh me just not being able to roll wounds on uh the the dwarf gyrocopter here because it took two of the three wounds, which makes me very sad. And so we go into combat, and of course the uh, Bloodthirster eats the cannon crew for breakfast, and I just reform to face the side of these dwarf warriors here. I'm still not sure what I'm going to do, but uh, it's facing the side of them is better than, than overrunning and being in his backfield unnecessarily at this point. So we go into opponent turn three. And he charges the Minotaurs into the Knoblars. I stand and shoot and do nothing. Uh, but when they hit me, the traps go off. And he does take one wound on the unit uh, from dangerous terrain from the traps. So uh, I think that's those Knoblars having done their jobs. They're pretty much going to die, though. So. so he then has the bombers zigzag over my plague bearers. Um and land behind him, and he's going to end up trying to drop the bomb on the center of that unit. And we'll do so with a direct hit, which peels five of the Plague Bearers off that unit, because I can't roll a five-up ward save to, to, for anything right now. And over here, he uh, Flock of Dooms again that same unit. Um, I've got one guy left, so only the standard is left, so he hasn't claimed any fortitude from it yet, and I stick the panic check, uh, and so he's not running. <laughs> so it's going to take at least another turn for him to come in and, and knock the fortitude off that, 
and and that was luckier than I really deserved to be, but uh, at this point I'll take it. Um, but it was a miscast. Uh, or no, he then miscast uh, Wissens on the hammer unit because he thought I was coming in and rolled a two for his miscast result and blows up just an incredible number of these gore and takes a wound on his caster, but his caster is not sucked in the warp. But that does end his magic phase. And during shooting, he lays a, a flame template over the Noblar unit, kills all of them except for the musician and the standard bearer, and again, I stick my leadership check not to panic. Um, I've been succeeding a stupid number of these, and I'm sure it's got to be frustrating my opponent at this point that he he's not clearing up the fortitude from these units at all. So over here in combat, the Minotaurs kill the uh, Noblars down to only the standard bearer, and they break, and of course the standard gets destroyed, so he claims his first fortitude here, and ends up overrunning, or the pursuit rather, or overrun, I'm not sure what, which it's called in that case, uh, only takes him three inches, so he is right in the face of man-eaters and is about to have a very bad day as that Minotaur unit. Um... So we go into my turn three, and as promised, in come the man-eaters to give a very bad day to some minotaurs. And again, sorry for the blurry picture here. I think next time I may use my actual camera instead of keep using my camera phone, but we'll see. Um, I decide to go ahead and say what the hell and charge my general into the flank of these uh, warriors, I've got Doom and Darkness and uh, Soul Blight on them, so I figure this is about the best opportunity uh, to come get some there, because he's just not dispelling those spells, because he's afraid of Purple Sun, so I figure I can keep them up. Uh, and then over here, the Demigriffs come slamming into the side of the now reduced Gore unit, um, which I'm perfectly happy with, um, unless he starts throwing uh, his character in... Um, I'm pretty sure that I'll win the grind here, even if I don't break them initially, um, since they're steadfast. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure the three Demigriffs are going to put a major hurting on this unit. And then over in the center, I just kind of reorganize things a little bit. Uh, nothing really huge moving. I'm really waiting for those hammers to come in. I know he's afraid to put them in the building, because he's really afraid of the Purple Sun just sweeping through and killing them. Um... But I figured, I, I think he's playing a little too hesitantly. He doesn't want to risk me uh, getting in there and actually killing the fortitude that that unit has, so he's really holding them back. And I'm being passive as well, so it's just not a whole lot's going on in the middle here. Uh, so magic, I do get uh, Doom and Darkness and Soul Blight off on the dwarfs again, but he counters uh, Purple Sun. And over here, the Minotaurs do two wounds to the Man-Eaters, and the Man-Eaters kill the Minotaurs in response. Um, so, yeah, there's there's another bit of fortitude for me. Um, unfortunately, the, the Man-Eaters fail their role to restrain pursuit, or to, to not overrun, rather, and uh, run basically right towards that building, uh, which totally does not help me at all. Then in combat, the Bloodthirster chews off about ten dwarves uh, and takes no wounds in response. However, uh, they stick because they're stubborn and he's going to end up uh, reforming to face me, which is going to be a bad time uh, because we're both poison wounded and, and I just I don't have a lot of good defenses. Uh, and only one wound left, so I'm, I'm real nervous about that. Then over here, you may be wondering, where the hell did this unit of gore come from? Um, this is what's left after the Demigriffs got done with them. Uh, Demigriffs just totally opened a can on them. And my opponent lost combat, but he was stubborn and proceeded to roll a 10 followed by an 11 for his break check. So he ends up running dangerous terrains through the building, the Noblars the plague bearers and ended up there with that unit that you see. Um, so we go to opponent turn four and he rallies the gore unit um, and they spin around right like you see them there. 
And here he flies the gyro bomber over again, trying to drop a bomb, ends up misfiring, and it's a dud again, but it doesn't do anything on the unit this time. So his magic was totally worthless, and we go into combat. I kill only like another three or four dwarves before they take down my general, so uh, definitely not happy about that. So we go to my turn four, and now that I have a, a hostile unit in the backfield, uh, my turn four is basically just reforming uh, to make sure nothing is going to be caught in a rear. Uh, I, I am presenting a flank to some stuff over here, but I'm just trying to rearrange so that I've got a decent way of dealing with it, and uh, it's, it's hard because I'm surrounded at this point kind of unintentionally. Um, over here, I finally remember to move the Knoblars into this building so they can start hucking rocks at the Hammerers. Um, I'm not really expecting it to do much, but I'm just kind of hoping to, to take a few wounds so that when I finally engage that unit, it'll be a little less strong than it was at the beginning. Then on this flank, uh, I move the, uh, Demigriffs around so that they can line up some rear charges against those dwarves, and then the other two Noblar unit survivors, I'm just starting to have them scatter. Um, they're still counting for fortitude for me, and I want to make it as hard as I can for that gyrocopter to hunt them both down. And then I have my BSB here who's still trying to get a good shot for Purple Sun or magic down that gyrocopter. Um, so we, my magic, he pretty much held off. There was nothing really to worry about there, so uh, he just Per, stop purple sun uh, and then during shooting between the two Noblar units I end up taking one hammer off which is pretty much what I would have expected um, the the main thing is they they've got armor and I'm throwing strength too so that was pretty good um, so we go into opponent turn five and he runs his uh, character off to the side here because he wants to save him because he thinks I'm just going to ram everything I can down the throat of that unit which is about right but uh, he forgot that I had guns in the uh, <laughs> in the, the, the man eater unit so my plan is I'm going to swift reform and just blow him away like it was a Quentin Tarantino movie or something um, so I don't know why Oh, okay, yeah, he did move the gyro bomber over the plague bearers again and blasted off another four of them. Um, I just didn't catch the bomber in this picture. I think it's off behind my corpse card at this point. So we go into my turn five, and I charge everything into this gore unit. Um, this is kind of a waste, because since they've already broke their banner, they don't have any fortitude. But at this point, I think that I've held back too long, and I'm not going to break them on fortitude. So I'm trying to claim as many points as I possibly can, and I need to destroy this unit to do that. Uh, so I'm throwing both chariots for the impact hits, plus the plague bearers in there. And I'm pretty sure I can handle that. Um... And then I spin around the man-eaters, so they're going to shoot at his uh, great bray shaman there and hopefully get the points for him as well. So in case that doesn't work, I, I've got basically one last shot to get uh, Purple Sun off. So I move my Noblars out of the building, and you can see in the bottom corner where I positioned my uh, BSB, if I get it off in the big thing, I can run it basically down the center... Um, and catch the whole units. I mean, with the big template, it's going to get everything. And dwarves, being initiative two like they are, they're pretty much going to die. And maybe if I get lucky, I'll get the dwarf lord, but he is initiative four. But I should be able to get the units small enough where I can charge in after that and, and kill them on turn six. Uh, so that's my plan there. And here's just a better shot of where my BSB is and the fact that the two Noblar units are continuing to scatter. So my magic phase comes, and I think I rolled like a two and a one. So I have three dice for magic. Or no, two dice for ma I rolled two ones, I'm sorry. So two dice for magic. So I'm thinking, I am screwed. There's no way I'm getting the big pie plate uh, purple sun off. But then I get one die from 
the uh, Celestia Huracanum, so I'm at three, and I have three channels, and I proceeded to channel with all three dice. Three sixes, so I had six dice to my opponent's one. I tossed it for the, the big purple sun, I got it off, he couldn't stop me, and I rolled like ten inches on it. It runs down his entire freaking line, um, which was just absolutely perfect. And his BSB does not die, but his Dwarf Lord does. Um, and we don't even bother rolling for the other unit, um, because he his fortitude is broken at this point. Um, so it was really just a, a, a bottom of the ninth purple sun that ended up winning me this game. And this was the response of my opponent when asked about how he felt about that last turn. <laughs> so... <laughs> um, Understandably so. It was a very close back and forth game. He might have been a little under by points, but then just to uh, kick him square in the nuts with a purple sun at the end to win was, was kind of rough, and I understand that. So, big victory for me with the help of purple sun. Um, <laughs> it was a fun game, kind of going back and forth, although I think the, the last minute purple sun kind of sucked a little of the fun out of it. Um, I really don't even like using that spell. The only reason I put it in this list is it was such small units. Um, I didn't really have anything to handle hordes, so I, I kind of needed it. Um, but uh, all in all, it was interesting. I, I'm really hoping they don't do this kind of thing for ninth, because while it's a cute thing to just play around on one of our What the Hell Knights, um, it's not something I'd like to see in every game. Um, as far as just having whatever you want put in. Uh, now, admittedly, I know several of you are going to mention that I did have an unfair advantage, um, being that I have five armies c compared to Michael's two, but uh, not really a whole lot I could do about that. Um, but uh, it was a fun game. Um, I, I, I thought... My list was gimmicky, but it turns out it was gimmicky enough to work, so I can't really complain about that. Um, over the next few weeks, we're going to be taking a little bit of a break from the narratives for a little while uh, to focus on working up the club skill level. Um, there have been some concerns just about folks feel like they're getting kicked in the teeth, and so we're going to kind of do some games and some stuff to kind of help everybody's general skill set and hopefully get everyone feeling better about their the games and make them a little more even and, and, and just getting folks the skills they need to play the game well. So um, it should be fun. There will be plenty of battle reports coming out for it. So stay tuned. Um, and uh, we will be continuing the, narrata the narrations and lamentations with Materium and the Boys. Uh, we did one yesterday. We'll be doing one uh, again next week. It'll be Wednesdays at 9 p.m. on this channel. So uh, if you guys like, just want to hear us talking about stuff and narratives and, and all sorts of crazy things, uh, feel free to tune in. It's been a lot of fun doing it, and uh, we're definitely going to keep doing it into, at least until... Warhammer Weekly comes back on the air, uh, which uh, a, a rumor has it that's going to be sometime in October. Um, so we'll see if that's the case or not. Um, I, I've been enjoying the, the show, so we're going to keep it running. Um, all in all, thank you guys for watching. If you have any comments, as always, feel free to, to write them below. I'll be more than happy to get back to you on them. Um, if you have any uh, suggestions, any thoughts on this type of game, or even some other types of games we can do for uh, the WTF Warhammer Knights, um, we've been enjoying those because it lets us do kind of kooky, strange things. Um, so if you have some ideas on that, we'd be more than happy to, to hear them as well, um, as it would be fun to kind of come up with what other people think is, is strange and interesting. So... Um, but yeah, leave them in the comments, and uh, I'll definitely get back to them. So thank you guys for watching, and uh, we will catch you next time.